just don't protect every direction of force. And in some sports, uh, a helmet just isn't part of the equipment, like basketball or soccer. Hockey has a small type of helmet. They just don't protect you against all the directions of forces that come into play. You can get forces on top of your head, on the side, on the back, but under the shin, there's nothing to protect that except for a physiologically positioned jaw. Putting your jaw in its physiologic rest position brings the actual jawbone away from the skull so that when you receive that force from an impact, that force doesn't get translated through the joint into that cradle of the skull, injuring the brain. Hey, I mean, that is a good point. I think we might start seeing some go back. I don't even really want to come in on this song. This, this is a nice little song I found. Hello, everybody. It's Harry Bennett. Grant Goodwin, sideline to sideline, 2024, right here on L4 Media. How you doing, man? Doing well, doing well. It, this, missed this, you. Did you miss me? Yeah, I missed you a little bit. I missed you when you were in Vegas. And, um, but I, I was just about to say that this one's always a little weird. Like, I don't know why we've been doing this long enough, uh, but for some reason, the, the March episode, we just, it's like we were at summer camp and we made out a few times and this is the first time we've seen each other since and yeah. you just got that little awkwardness about it. That, that, that's it. That in itself is so I, I will ask you this. Uh -huh. So it's a beautiful day outside. Yeah. So I was sitting out the studio, outside the studio, just enjoying the weather. And I saw you pull up mm -hmm. and then you parked. And then I saw you cry, uh -huh. kind of slap yourself, yeah. did yeah. a big old thing of whiskey, and then came in. Are you okay? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's not to do with the show, I does have it? To do this again for <laughs> the 35th year. <laughs> it does feel like the 35th year. How many years? Uh, 16? 16, 16, 16? No. 17. 17 years wow. 17 years of sideline to sideline and this break this uh starts off the 2024 season now i say that we probably won't see you back in studio again until june-ish probably yeah i think that's when we start yeah it's usually when we start the, we, the, the last week in june but what we are going to be doing today is talking a little bit of realignment uh we didn't really you know you were out doing your thing we kind of basically just january and february just kind of just decompress completely from football. In fact, you and I were talking as we were going over the list of the coaching changes. So many of them, I'm like, wow, I didn't even realize that. I didn't right. realize Dangerfield's offensive coordinator, Seth Hubbard's headed to Kirbyville. Yeah. Um, Aaron Babineau going to Cameron Yo. Great That's hire. Yeah. He's been the DeSoto uh, defensive coordinator through their last five years. I think he was on staff in Marshall too with uh, Mathis, former U University of Texas Longhorn. That's right. Uh, I, I think a real good home run hire there. But that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be talking a little bit of the realignment, uh, just kind of pointing out the areas that we are we find interesting. And, of course, this will lead up to June. We'll have our toughest district, toughest region, underdog, or dark horse. I say underdog. Our dark horse show, things like that. And this is also just old school. This is how we used to do it back before you could subscribe to where we were. It was just kind of remind everybody, hey, we're here. We're going to be doing a show again in 2024. Uh, no commercials. Let's just start right into it. Right. We're going to start, we'll go with, uh, we'll work our way uh, 2A up. And basically, this is just kind of looking at the list. And then after this, we'll go with, co we'll kind of talk some coaches changes and stuff. But when I look at this one, I think the biggest one for me uh, that I find interesting is, and, and it's not necessarily because of how good it is, but when you look over in Region 3 and District 10, just how many schools that will be playing in that district. I mean, they're not going to have much of a non-district schedule. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the two uh, big additions there, uh, Wascom and Elysian Fields, moving down. I know both of them struggled uh, last year mightily, yeah. right? But, uh, you know, th their recent history, they've been pretty salty. So, you know, if, if they rebound back to where they were just three or four years ago, that's going to make a – tough district 10 how about district nine with pewitt coming yep. in right that's that's the big one you know when you look at with Cooper and, and honey grove and what they've done in district nine for a while and it was wolf city that was there 
And for Pewitt, it, it feels like a bit of a reprieve. It feels like Pewitt can kind of be a, 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 a at least a region threat. I don't know what they have coming back, but you got to think coming out of where they were the last few years, this is a, a way easier district. And, and to be fair, and this is nothing against the teams of Timpson and Beckville, but I'm not going to say it's an easier region, but I think it's a region that they can be competitive in. Yeah, yeah, same here. Uh, you know, a lot of the uh, Region 3 is going to be tough. That District 11 uh, doesn't change up a whole lot, but, no. man, that's pretty salty right there. And then you go to uh, District 14 with Holland and Mason in there. And then, you know, San Saba's had a pretty nice run over the last five years. That's going to be a tough one. And then when you look out at District 4, you see uh, Cisco and Holly mm -hmm. and Olney and Stamford. I think that's going to be pretty competitive. Uh, in Region 2, I mean, man, you look at it and it, it, it first off, Region 2, looking at District 8, that used to be Region 3 forever. Yeah. And for, for Cayuga and Price Carlisle and all them to be now completely entrenched in Region 2 is just kind of weird. But And I know we'll be doing this you know, when we do our toughest region, but just looking at it early, man, if you're Coleman, if you're Bangs, Bangs, by the way, they're getting a new head coach. Uh, the I can't think of his name right now, but he was the defensive – uh, backfield coach for Gregory Portland. Um, but if you're Coleman or someone like this, you've got to be really, really happy with this region. Yeah. How about uh, if you're in uh, District 2 out there with Abernathy, uh, New Deal, New Home, Post. Post has been tough. I mean, that that might be a, a murderer's row right there, given if any of those teams have you know anything coming back. Yeah, no, I, I agree. All right, anybody else in region or Division 1? Uh, nope. Kind of, kind of. Not a lot of changes there now, that, that strike my fancy for uh, re, uh, Division One And 2A, here we go as we now pull up the next one. I'll if it'll come up. All right, there we go. Um, all right, so we go to 2A, Division Two, And I'm going to go ahead and, and steal the Thunder District 10. Yeah. Holy crap, District 10. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and maybe spoil this. That might be the toughest district in 2A, maybe 3A and 4A. I mean, that is just – it's big and it's deep. Yeah. Yeah, Bremon, Mark, obviously, uh, who has everybody coming back, I guess. Chilton, uh, Goldthwaites, you know, if they if they if they get better, which they have been getting better like the last couple of years, yeah. I believe, right? And some of the record, you know, I think what I don't remember what they went last year, but I know they were uh they've been improving some. Uh yeah, that's that's gonna be a tough one. Uh so is District Five, man. Wheeler, yes. Wellington out there. Um that's a tough one. District 14, uh, you know, Love Lady, Alto, you Alto, know, Alto, yeah, back. Alto coming off of uh, probation, I guess, right? Yes. That, they, that was, uh, they ended just the last realignment, right? And it's the funny, two years. they wanted to avoid Division One, and they ended up devo uh, uh, doing yeah. it this time the right way. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be a solid district with Tenahaw. Tenahaw, yeah. Um, Overton last year, you know, had yeah. that. Now, we, we'll have to see. Overton does this once every, what, 13, 14 years where mm -hmm. they'll just come out of nowhere have an 11, 12 win season. We'll have to see if they're able to build on that, but I think they can. District um, 15 with Shiner and Falls City. Yeah, Shiner, man, that's going to be, you know, where do they where do they land now, you know, after a couple of years after the, the, the brothers are gone? And, and then last year, you know, they had an okay season. I, I think they're in a district that's, you know, very competitive for, I mean, that they should be able to win. Um, you, you know, I don't really know enough about Yorktown. I know Falls City, of course, but, I mean, right now, Shiner's got to be happy with where they're at. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to look over here. Uh Let's see here. Region four, re district six, district six. district eight. Uh, I think it's interesting just because it's it's really not changed other than uh, uh, oh, what's the uh, Celeste went back or out of it. You know, they were in that they were kind of in that weird spot in that district. But it's going to be interesting to see how Collinsville responds after losing maybe the best quarterback in Class Two A last year. Munster is extremely young and they're boy, loaded, right? Yeah, they're loaded. I, I want to go ahead and say that this might be the best Munster team since their state championship team of what six years ago. I mean, they really took Albany to the to, to the yeah. mat last year, and, and you could make the case that, that was a lot of sophomores, right? Yes, it's a lot of sophomores, and, and you could make the case that they might have should have you know probably could have won that game. They had the lead early, and then they threw an interception uh, late in the game. But yeah, what they have at Munster, and, and when you look at that region. 
you know, Wellington's always going to be solid, but, you know, what do they have coming back? And a lot of this we don't know what they have coming back yet because we haven't started getting all the paperwork and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I think for the, when I look at Class 2A Division Two, though, I, I still just looked at, man, Region 3 is going – you're either going to be where – the winner of that is going to easily win state or the winner of that might be too beat up to win state. And right. we've seen that, you know, we've seen it work both ways out on that kind of stuff. Yep. All right, let's go now. Did it work okay. out well for Gilmer last year. I might say iron sharpens iron, right? I will say I, I was just thinking about them today. Uh, Terry Pittman, you know, one of our longtime listeners and real good friends and, and he's, uh, he's retiring. And so we were kind of just talking and stuff and, I still am amazed that Gilmer won that game. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, it just still, it, it's no different than the Rangers winning the World Series. And they just, just they just took it to a man. I took uh, it to uh, a great team. You know, and, after that uh, uh, Pleasant Grove loss, Gilmer, that, that's like that woke the Gilmer defense up, right? Yeah, that's a good point, man. Yeah. Because, I mean, and it's not like, and I know Belleville fans will say, well, we did this wrong, but it's not like Belleville spit the bit. No. Like, no, they played no. a really good game. Yeah. Gilmer just finally, and it felt like, you know, how many times have we seen Gilmer in the underdog come out and start strong in one of these state championship games and then just kind of fade a lot of it because of who they were playing. Yeah. Carthage that time when they jumped out 14 nothing and then lost 72 to 21 or whatever it was. Right. China Spring, the block field goal. And so for them to come out in that first half, do all that, and then sustain it, again, I, I just think that's one of the most – I used to think that their first state championship was the best. I think this one might be. because it's, it's pretty special. Yeah. I don't think anybody saw them uh, doing that. No, exactly. Not that they came out of nowhere, but, again, going back after that uh, uh, Ple Pleasant Grove loss at home, it wasn't just real – Yeah, it wasn't even close. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't. I mean, there, it, at times they were getting pushed around, but, man – you know, that Gilmer defense has a lot of young kids on it. They're coming back. That's going to be a pretty tough defense this year. I wonder where they're playing uh, Brenham at this year. Do you know? No. Because, uh, wait, what now? Gilmer and Brenham. Oh, Brenham and the, the Gilmer, Cubs? Yes. I guess I missed that. I thought yeah, you were talking about the, see if there's a, a location on that. I, I thought you were talking about the quarterback situation because you know, no, they, no, they've no, got no. a new quarterback that's moved in. Uh the, one of the McCown boys has moved oh, over really? to Gilmer. And to apparently, Brown. no, to Gilmer. Oh, to Gilmer. Okay. And apparently, uh, what's his name that was the From Rusk? Uh, I think he was at Jacksonville. Oh, Jacksonville. The other, yeah, oh, okay. the other McCown. The other, the other um, but uh, apparently, uh, what's Tennyson doesn't really like playing quarterback. So this isn't a situation where if he has to, yeah. you know, when GJ rolled in, they had a quarterback and that, you know, even Trailer admitted a couple years later that that just it never worked. That just never fit. Yeah. But if you got a guy that's like, yeah, I just want to play defense. By all means, play quarterback. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Go ahead and start talking this uh, region two or this uh, class three division one. Uh, division one. Uh, one thing that uh, jumps out at me is Sweetwater moving down, going into region or I'm sorry, district three in there with Jim Ned, dude, and Clyde. Clyde was pretty tough last year. Uh, just be prepared that we're big on shallow water this year. A, not just because they're dropping down in class three division one. Sweetwater. I mean, Sweetwater, excuse me. What did I say? Shallow water? Shallow water. Yeah, Sweetwater. We're big uh, on you two, Shallow water. Well, yeah, they're all, well, I guess they are both red Mustangs, so we're good either way. But, you know, Sweetwater, freshman quarterback last year, they mm -hmm. started the, on fire, and then they literally got out depth the rest of the way. Yeah. That's not going to happen now. Yeah. And they're now in a division where let's go ahead and, and say the big bad. Did you find that uh, Brenham? I'm Gilmer? pulling it up right now. Oh, okay. uh, that big bad bad Brock Eagles are no longer in this region. Right. This region has a vacuum at the top. And for all those like like Shallow Water and, and for Bushland and all those and Ponder, like, yeah, we want to fill it. Well, then here comes Sweetwater. And, man, I'm just telling you, be prepared. Sweetwater was going to be good in 4A Division two. They're going to be really good in 3A Division one. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. It just says that they're playing. It doesn't Gilmer. say where. Not yet. I can find it here in a second, okay. though. But uh, and it might still. It might be a um, a, a TBD, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's a because you got to figure that neutral might be, field. Yeah, that's something. what I was thinking. I could see that being a Thursday. Uh, maybe they do that. The old school. I miss the Gilmer Thursday games. Yeah. At the beginning of the year. How about Liberty Allo, uh moving down to three A Division One, going into District Eight with Atlanta, Jefferson, uh, Sabine, Gladewater, Tatum. Wide oak, eh, wide oak. And let's talk about the bigger part, them getting Brad Willard as their head coach. That's right. Now, 
when you look at Brad Willard and what he did at Mount Vernon, obviously he knew they were going to probably move down. And, and I mean, you're, you're giving this dude a guy who built Mount Vernon um, from what Bryles did. And it's not that, I don't know. He just did it different and not that Bryles doesn't have physicality. I'm not trying to say that, but if you saw the two differences with McGill at running back and McGill at linebacker and all when Willard's Mount Vernon team is just hit different. Mm -hmm. And if, if he's going to preach that and they're going to, he's going to get a, an athletic uh, group at Liberty Island. Let's be honest in that area. When one team starts to pop up, people start to move. And that's just how that works. That's how it works in any area where you have three or four high schools within yeah. driving distance. That's what happens between Elysia Fields, Wascom and Marshall. But anyway, I, I feel like that's one of those programs that could quickly shoot up the charts, like really. Oh quick. yeah. Yeah. I expect them to, to do well right out of the gate. Cause I mean, this district's not going to be, I mean, you know, everybody has huge questions in this district, right? Um, you know, Tatum is losing Cole Watson and, and they haven't quite, they've been good since Keeling got there, but they haven't quite established that Keeling attitude that we saw at Wascom. Atlanta might be the most coming back. I think if I remember again, we don't have all that in front of us. Um, and then, you know, what's Gladewater going to do. Right. And so, yeah, I, I think if you're Liberty Isle, you've got to definitely be happy with your head coach and where you're at now in the district. Yeah. Uh, district 11 pretty much stays the same, yeah. but still just a hell of a district, a tough one right there. Right. Well, you know, what makes this district no, fun? No more Lorena, in which it, but yeah. still, which everybody gets a little bit of a sigh of relief, but what makes this district fun is Franklin and LRA and, and probably go to, they all seem to be taking the same step back. So they're all going to still be in, around the same. They're all going to still be, the region threats. Uh -huh. I don't know if they're all going to be as good as last year. And we also, and I know Franklin has lost the state championship before, but there's got, there's now that question. How will Franklin respond? I want to tell everybody in three, a division one, we're sorry what they're probably going to do because when Franklin's angry, it's, it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. And, and talking to Fannin and, and it's not that they didn't want to win, but he talked about it all year that, at times, something was missing from that squad, and I think it was getting beat. And I think now that they've been beaten, they've got a you know they've got another goal to, to do. I, I think that's going to be scary. And then out in Region Four, man, it's just a bunch of teams. I, and I don't mean that as a knock, but it you look at Lano and you look at Edna, and, and they've been kind of the two of the teams that are you know been the threats, especially Edna. And I don't really think that changes much. Yeah, I don't either. You know, uh, is Lano going to be the big fish? Right again. I think it's I them you know, they took a little bit of a step back last year, but uh, you know they, you know, just given their size and the dudes they put out there, they could be a threat out in that region. But again, you, you've also got teams like San Antonio Cole dropping down into three yeah. A, and that's a team that was actually a really solid four A team last year. Uh -huh. uh, you, you look at you know again Goliath who beat Edna last year in the regular season, and you know they always seem to be solid. Palacios and Orange Grove. I mean, again, th this is, and I say this is a positive. Region uh, four, three, division one has become enjoyable because it is kind of a, yeah, Edna and, and then we'll probably be at the end, but you don't know the path they're going to go through. And, and usually it's a couple new teams that haven't been up there for a while. Yep. All right. Let's now go over and, and we'll be talking about the, uh, uh, the pilot point thing here in a minute. I know we kind of glossed over that. Uh, hang on. Let me go to uh, three, a division two. Isn't that where we're going, or do we go? Uh, yeah, 3A yeah, Division 2. 3A Division 2. Now, this has been revised. I don't remember what the change was, but somebody won an appeal. Um, speaking of, man, you and I, we usually defend the UIL on realignment. We understand after kind of being behind the scenes a few years ago on some of that, how hard that is. But, dear God, the Lufkin to DFW, I just, yeah. that never made sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's crazy. Uh, <clears throat> 3A Division 2 doesn't, Nothing, no real big moves stood out at me on this one. Uh, for yeah. realignment, did um, it to you? You know, Jacksboro going back over into District Six. So you've got, you know, who had, you know, uh, I mean, uh, Millsap going over to District Six. Millsap, who kind of had gotten away from that district and made the playoffs for a couple of years. Now we see them right back into that district that was really tough. But what will Jacksboro be this year? You know, mm -hmm. Jacksboro beat Holiday, took Gunter uh, to the mat a little bit in that in that region final. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I think if I'm not mistaken, they lose everybody. And so mm -hmm. we're gonna have to see how they respond. Of course, Gunner is Gunner. I mean, I don't, you know, everybody 
in three A division. Boy, Gunner has scheduled one heck of a non district. I love that, and that yeah. tells me that tells me that Coach Rizell realizes that he needs to he needs to get some skins on the wall with a young team. Yeah, you, you know he needs to get some guys in some heavy action early. Um, and I know three A division two, especially region two, were so set on them moving up. And then when they didn't, that just <laughs> kinda, I think that might have changed some coaching decisions. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you're right. I mean, everything kind of feels the same. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Region Three, Dangerfield, uh, Hooks. You know, they're back in it. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Hugh Springs supposedly supposed to be better. Uh, yeah, I don't really see anything that really stands out to me. Yeah, nothing. Right. No, no huge changes. No, right? no huge changes. All right, so let's go to Class Four A, and we pull this one up. We'll start with 4A Division One. Division One. Division One. Hang on. We're not used to doing all these presentation stuff. Things we're trying to work on for next year. All right, let's go to Class 4A Division One. Um, first off, I guess I was mistaken. I was so under the pressure that Salina was 5A for sure. Like, I mean, like I had even, I'd even told a sponsor because we did a Salina show, like did the whole in December. Hey, thanks. Y'all are moving up. We're not going to, you know, and yet here they are firmly in 4A division one. And I mean, with Anna moving out, they've got to be happy about that, but this region's still going to be tough. Yeah. It's going to be real tough. Um, and you know, I kept hearing that uh, it's this next realignment. Is it the for, next? No, okay, maybe, maybe I confused. But that. I know okay. they were right on the line, right? Yeah. So, uh, I, I would think if you're a Salina Bobcat fan, you'd probably plan on going to 5A Division Two. Heck, they're growing so fast out there, they might go 5A Division One. Oh, right? hell, they might pull a Roy City and just, just leapfrog a class, could, basically. Yeah, could. Um, you know, District 4, yep. nothing real, uh, real shocking as far as uh, – uh, changes, but that's going to be a tough one with Brownwood, Stephenville. Never know what you're going to get with Marlboro Falls and Land Passes and Burnett too, right? Well, and then, you know, with Land Passes, you're always going to get a great offense. We, I saw them last year against Wimberley. Uh -huh. um, is Ike Hall back in – and he, had, he was a junior, right? Uh, I was thinking he was a senior. I do like that uh, Brownwood and Stephenville are back in the same district. Yeah, I do too. Um, I, I do like for for Stephenville's sake they, they've moved into a tough district, but nothing like they were in right. last year. And, and it felt like it felt like Stephenville got wore down. Yeah, um, and, and heck, we saw it in Brownwood with them playing. You know, basically their what was heck, the just being in a five team district. I think helps a little bit i think i i know it frustrates coaches because they want to get to the district as quick as possible but yeah i think in the long run if you play your schedule right i think it actually ends up helping you and um, then there's that district nine again sitting over in region three is henderson it, kilgore lindell pine Chapel tree. hill pine tree oh yeah pine tree pine tree is the one that yeah. drops in and i know we did this a couple of years or last realignment and and silver springs ended up being a consistent team <clears> and jacksonville didn't but Pine Tree has had playoff success at the 5A level. Yeah. I mean, not going three or four rounds deep by any stretch, <laughs> but I mean, they're, they're going to fall into this district. And yeah, they're still going to be probably underdogs against the Kilgores of the world, but they're Pine Tree's looking around going, we can be third. Palestine has a new, uh, a new head coach, James Rays, who came from Lumberton. Yeah. Kind of a shocking move over. Um, that's going to be interesting because they have been a team the last couple of years that kind of played keep away and tried to run the ball 45 times because they realized going up against the Kilgores in the world that you couldn't get in scoring matchups. Right. Well, Coach Rays and his offense philosophy is the exact opposite. Yeah. He wants to get into Swing it. it all around at Lumber Lumberton, didn't yeah. he? Uh, Chapel Hill, man. I said this during the thing. S I don't know what it was, but I there was something wrong during that state championship, and mm -hmm. it's and this is nothing against them or Anna, and, and I'm not trying to say that Anna deserved, but it just felt like Chapel Hill was sleepwalking, mm -hmm. and that was weird to me. And I'm just curious to see how that how they respond from that because we've seen programs that they they use that as that leaping off and they get better even though they might lose some stars, and then we see them where they kind of go back into being back to a four or five win team. So I'm I'm really really curious about them. I do want to go back over though to I, you know I, I I think one thing that I made a mental note about that uh, Chapel Hill Anna game was that. Um, as much as we talked about the Chapel Hill speed the last, what, three years, yeah. right? I think that Chapel Hill might have been a little bit shell-shocked in that first half. Thank coming you. out to see, seeing that Anna 
uh, speed and physicality, uh, physicality, but uh, the speed on defense, the quickness, but then just offensively, there were just too many weapons out there for them to cover from, you know, hash to hash. It was just, or, Numbers to numbers. It was just, it, it overwhelmed them, I think, a little bit. And, and I do want to say this, even if it would have been, and you know. turnovers didn't help either. No, turnovers didn't help either. And even if it would have been uh, Kilgore in that game, I don't know if anybody was beating Anna at that point. No. I mean, sometimes it. Sometimes you have to kind of look back and realize, and, and usually there's a couple each year afterwards. And, and Anna, I kind of got to re uh, go look at that and uh, re-watch the game a couple months ago or about a month ago. And, it, Jude, just what they were doing, you know, off the ball, just defensively off the ball. Yeah. And, and what I mean by that is they weren't letting Chapel Hill's speed get outside, man. That backside contain, they were setting that edge. They were playing disciplined defensive football, which yeah. at times we didn't think Anna could do. But then you realize, well, no, it was just who they were playing all year. Right. You know, and they were actually pretty good. But I want to go back to District 7 just because – You've got that marrying again of, you know, North Dallas, Fort Worth and Northeast Texas, that I-30 road. And we've talked about this before, man. Some really good Salina teams have gone out into Paris and struggled and gone out into Sulphur Springs and struggled. So I, I think that that district, once again, is going to be interesting just because of that divide line. Yeah, Panther Creek. Panther Creek, we know what yep. they did last year. We kept doubting them, but, man, they kept proving us wrong. How about uh, District 13 out in Region 4? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm on uh, – that's Division 2. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was, I was looking at uh, Division 2, uh, District 13, uh, that uh, Navarro and Wimberley are in a district now, finally, mm -hmm. right? Yep. They're in there with uh, Gonzalez, Gerald, Lago Vista, Salado, and Smithville. All right, let me pull up uh, Division Two. I think that, I think that might that that's going to help a team like Navarro, who's been right on the edge a few times. But I, you know, I don't think the district that them and Wimberley have been in the last two alignments have really helped them. Well, yeah, adding Gonzalez, adding Smithville, adding Salado is really going to help because instead instead of having to play Austin Achieve. Right. And, and now right. I will say this, Maynard New Tech has, has gotten better as a program, and, and they're actually starting, but they're also a regular school. They're not a charter school. Yeah. Uh, but they're actually becoming a really good football program. And so last year that was a test. But, yeah, you know, we have the Laga Vista Coaches Show, and we talked about that weekly. Like you knew who you were going to play. You knew who you were going to beat. You could literally almost predict the scores. And, and I think having, you know, a team like Smithville who, you know, consistency is an issue, but in this district might be athletically one of the better teams. Yeah. Now, again, could be. that doesn't necessarily translate to football all the time, uh, but let's uh, go ahead. Over. How about District 12? Yeah, exactly. Man. I was about to say, let's go to Region 3, District 12. You know, China Spring and Lorraine are like, yay, we got out of our tough district. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Conley I, and La Vega. Hello. I mean, you've got La Vega who, man. And I can't remember, and I, I know Matt Stepp usually listens, and so message us. I can't remember if the guy that the, the transfers in at quarterback and stuff are back, or if they were seniors, or if there's a combination of. But if La Vega can keep that offense, but then figure out that defense, which is so odd to say about La Vega, La Vega could be a team that instantly is a region favorite. Yeah. Um, China Spring, it's going to be interesting to see. Lorena, you know, when they've been up in 4A, they've been good, not state good, but still good. Um, let's see. Looking over District 7, Gilmer, Spring Hill, yep. North Lamar, Pittsburgh, Pleasant Grove. So basically the same. District 8, Athens, Brownsboro, Bullard. Carthage Center and Rusk. I think the big winner in that was, and I know this sounds weird, Van, and I know Van's now in Gilmer and Pleasant Groves, but I think I think Van's more competitive against the Gilmers and Pleasant Groves than they are the Carthages. And I'm not saying yeah. Van's going to win district or anything like that. There's a lot of teams that could say that. <laughs> 100, yeah, again, and then again, we say that, and then Gilmer them. Uh, by the way, yeah, as of right now, uh, Gilmer uh, at, in Brenham is at TBD. Uh, it is okay. September 27th, though. Okay. Um, hey, we're gonna play that by ear. We might, yeah, I know what you're gonna say steak and seafood I buffet, just, I literally or all to, you can eat. I was literally yeah. about to say that. Dang it. <laughs> hey, how about uh, district three, man? Now you got Graham and Brock in the same district, and Graham changing coaches. Interesting because a lot of people felt like this team this year will be one of Graham's best teams. And we're right. talking about a, 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 a what a 15 year run where Graham has consistently been state semifinalist, yeah. made a state championship or, or lost in the state championship to Carthage, lost a heartbreaker in a, in a state semifinal to Pittsburgh. Uh, and they've always just been right at that door. 
And yeah, Brock. And of course, we all know we have a Brock coaches show. And I think people don't understand that Brock is already built for 4A Division II. This is why yeah. they this is why two years ago Mathis scheduled who he did in 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 his non-district. It wasn't just a toughen up for state. It was, hey, that's who we're gonna be playing in the next six to eight years anyway. Right. So let's get used to it. And I mean, when you look at that re- that district, I mean it's it's right now to me, it's Brock, Graham, and then Watch out for Mineral Wells. Cody Worrell's second year there. They've got a lot of people coming back. He's happy where they're at because they were in a district last year that, you know, it was with Graham too, but you basically, you had to win the two you're supposed to and you or you were out They that weren't able to. Um, but yeah, I, I think Brock is going to adjust a lot quicker than what people realize. Yeah, I do too. I don't, I don't think they'll miss a beat, actually. Uh, Katie Harmony, I, I'm curious about any new school around big towns like a Panther Creek. You see how quick they assimilated them. Look how quick Anna, once they finally figured it out. Yeah. So I, I'm curious about them in that district, just because, I mean, you've got a Harmony School of Innovation. I think those are the two same place schools, though, aren't they? Uh, I don't know. I think anyway, but still, uh, Harmony School played a couple teams last year. I know they played. A, There's a Harmony School of something or another. Sports off of, medicine. Uh, no, uh, right off of. Uh, not George Bush, maybe 121. Oh, up here. Yeah, no, it is off the... Uh, oh, so is it, I guess they're a chain then. The, George, yeah, it's a chain. For pro, well, they're for profit, yeah, for yeah. profit charter school that right. everybody's trying to get into now. Um, yeah, that's going to be I think fun. they're Harmony School of Business. It's okay. up there on George Bush. Uh, that makes sense because I know one of them is like Harmony School of Sports Medicine. Okay. And, and the coach that I won't name the coach and go look at the schedule. He was laughing like, you know, they're not real good, but at least they can, they know how to ice themselves and everything <laughs> like that. Um, district 11. I'm curious, you know, Belleville, how do they respond? Mm-hmm. You know, best team finally kind of broke through that barrier that they had had. They fall short. How will they respond? I think it's going to be really real. Because let's, let's not forget they return the big boy at yeah. defensive line. They don't, it's not like they lost the house. He just committed to A&M, right? Yeah, he has time to make a change, but we'll <laughs> accept that right now. You want him to go to Notre Dame. Yes, uh, that's exactly. Actually. Notre Dame fan. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go ahead and now talk about some of the the big stuff uh, as far as coaching changes. And we were going to do this anyway, but then everything got really, really changed. I, I do want to start with the one that's the biggest one, I think, in 3A, um, and that's Chad Worrell going back to Pilot Point. Uh-huh. You know, Pilot Point over the last couple of years had – I mean, they just, you want to talk about a, a and not just a, a football program, but just a school system that the wheels just fell yeah, off. Yeah, they imploded. They, they imploded. They had some superintendent issues. They had some, uh, like their head softball coach got arrested. Their trainer got arrested. The coachings quit. Uh, you know, pilotpointbearcat.com, who is a huge, just, you know, I mean, you want to talk about a, a guy that supports his town like no other, literally had just basically said they were dead to me like he just he couldn't even do anything with them last year that, that there was such a disconnect between the school front office so to speak and the rest of the community they hire a new superintendent and, and i'm going to go ahead and be honest i think she made a miracle home run hell mary whatever kind of hire you want to call this it could not have gone any better for pilot point other than ga moore coming back in at 32 years old ready to coach yeah and you got a hometown boy who is yeah. very well loved. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's had success everywhere. I mean, we're talking about a guy that, uh, wow, you're a little here. Uh, you're talking about a guy that when we went and saw Brock and uh, Pilot Point a few years ago in this intense, I mean, this is two great teams, and we walk over to the Pilot Point side, and all they can talk about is is, is, is Chad and just, mm-hmm. you know, man, we yeah. love what he's done, and we love where he's at, and he's so successful, and we're so happy for him. And, I mean, sometimes you, these things happen where it looks like everything's going to crap, but now you've got Chow World. You're in a district that is very winnable. You're out of mm-hmm. Brock. You're out of Ponder. You're now in Region 2 with Madison and, and that like and Whitesboro. And, and man, you, you th- this is why you can never – you never uh, assume your station in life as a football program, whether it's great or whether it's bad, because that thing changes in a heartbeat because yeah. – Four years ago, Pilot Point won 26 games over three years. The last three years, they've won 10 total games. Wow. Now, all of a sudden, would it shock any of us if they're 11 and one or, you know, 10 and two? It won't take him long. Right. The, the, these kids, I guarantee you, they're going to have some of the biggest numbers they've had probably since Danny David was there a few years ago. Oh, yeah. And they'll be in the weight room, uh, 
ready to run through a brick wall for for Chad for sure. Oh yeah, I mean that's the that's the thing that you know people don't talk enough about was just how you know how he built Brock and just how he built them with with like you said almost a reverence, kind of like how he had a reverence for coach GA more and that he, he's, he's carried that. And I don't know. I just don't, I don't see this. And I, I, I don't want to jinx him. I don't see this going bad. I, I think at, at best. So I mean, you're I, saying state championship or bust in year one. I, I'm saying one and done, Chad. That's I, it. I, I'm saying that it, at worst, they're at least back to being a region threat. How about John settle? Uh, I hate that man. Yeah. I mean, not, I mean, congratulations to, I think it was the defensive coordinator, but mm-hmm. Settle kind of came he in. He built that Sunnyvale program from ground up. Yep. He was there. Been a very one. successful program. And, and, you know, I think a lot of people misunderstand where Sunnyvale is and, and don't literally like, why hasn't he, you know, why didn't he do like Brock? Sunnyvale is more landlocked. I mean, it's literally yeah. in between, you know, Forney and Dallas and Mesquite. Mesquite. There's yeah. not a lot of growth there. That's why they've literally kind of stayed in this, you know, where they're at. Sure. And I, you know, for us, it kind of something because he kind of started at Brownsboro right when I started. I did a Coach Shettles show back in 2004. Um, and, and so we always kind of rooted for them and I always felt bad that they kind of got kicked over into region two all the time. Yeah. But you know what? They started giving Gilmer some hell of a game. So, you know, I'm um, just, Oh, again, we talked about it. Palestine, James Ray's uh, going there. I, I think that's huge. I guess, again, this is another one I missed. Casey Dacus retired yeah. or quit. Um, Kirbyville's Trey Allen is on now. I, I think that's a good hire. It yeah, I think like, that'll, that'll work out well for Navasota. Not that the uh, Dacus was bad at all, but I just think Trey Allen might be the right man for uh, the Rattlers. Yeah, I agree. Lake Worth, man, they're a team that keeps feeling like they kept close, but they can't keep a coach. Everybody comes there for a year, claims they're there to build them, and then they end up moving on. Um, Lavernia. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is one of those programs. Will they continue this build? Because, man – uh, what Coach Mulder that there did, you know, nineteen and six, and just completely turned the Bears around. He's gone. Uh, they're promoting as assistant coach Brian Knoll. I tend to like the inside hires when the schools are really successful. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I'm going to say I going. don't always understand it when the program hasn't been successful. That never, I, I never understand that. Jason Garrett. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to catch that. Of course, <laughs> Corpus Christi. Uh, Cal Allen is still not hired yet. Apparently, they've got. I don't know what's true. I, I, I kind of feel like I'm not knocking Cal Allen, but I kind of feel like they still think they're higher up. Like they're waiting for some big, you know, office. Well, I know. feel like they feel like they should run region four. That's my right? point. Yeah, and exactly. when they don't, then I think there's problems in Wildcat land. I might be wrong, but that's no, how I, I think, I think, think that's exactly how it is. Look at this one. We keep talking about coaches moving down. Former Marshall uh, Maverick, Sam Parker who was the head coach at Tom Ball Memorial. He comes down to Canyon Lake. Wow. I think that's a great hire for Canyon Lake. Yeah, um, a nice area, too. Great area. That's, again, that's where we ended up staying. We went down to Wimberley, was over there, and had such a blast. Um, you know, Charles Drum, he, he, it, it felt like about four years ago he had them ready to become a region threat, and then whatever happened, you know, it's just sometimes you just don't make it. Uh, yeah. But but I, I like I like that hire. I'm curious to see how that's going to hi- uh, go. Let's see. Let's drop down. Hey, your favorite school, Ferris. Yeah. Darren. I don't know why you keep saying that. <laughs> you don't remember? <laughs> no. So so uh, the last year, not only was the last year, I think it was 2012. Uh-huh. Uh, we were still broadcasting. And we had a first Did round. Did I lay a dirt snake in a <laughs> Exxon bathroom? There oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. We were at the game. So we were broadcasting Paris Ferris uh-huh. at Roy City. So okay. It, it, it was like the, what didn't it, wasn't 2012 the first time they opened the Roy City Stadium? I think Man, it was. I, maybe, I don't know. But, but anyway, so we were there and this was a typical, it, it was like 10 to 9. Paris was supposed to roll through them and we go to a break and, you know, People don't know back then we'd take our heads off, our headsets off, we'd start <laughs> commenting. And you were like, if Ferris can't <laughs> beat Ferris, they should be kicked out of the UIL. <laughs> if Ferris can't beat Ferris. Ferris. You okay. were so angry that night because it was an ugly, it was one of those games where you know how Paris can be. Yeah. And, and yeah. it was one of those games they should have beat Ferris by four touchdowns. Yeah. And I think they held on like 14. I do to nine. remember that game. Oh, you were not happy. Um, as we talked about Graham, uh, Kenny Davidson retires as the winningest coach in Graham history. Uh, I was surprised by that. I do like though that, you know, he basically is handing off a really good program to his defensive coordinator. 
Um, and I'm not saying it's wrong if you if you play out that talent, win your state, and then go. There's nothing wrong with that either. But I do like the fact that he's handing off, I think, again, as we talked about, possibly one of the 4A Division II favorites this year. Yeah, yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I cannot wait to see Graham. Uh, I mean, dude, just think, you know, not taking anything away from Bridgeport and Burkmanette and all the other in Mineral Wells in that district, but I just got to think, man, that – Brock Graham for a district championship will be epic Ooh. two years in a row, man. I have a feeling we're going to be out at least one of those. Yeah. Especially because if that's right, if in the right part of the schedule, that'll be right when the temperatures are finally starting to break and yeah. it'll only be 95 instead of 105. That's right. Um, let's see here. As you talked about Sunnyvale, we talked about Cameron Yo. I know you really wanted to, you want to give me that whole thing about Dallas A plus Academy and how close they are. Oh, they are. Hey, I mean, here's they, your are favorite. On, they are on the precipice of, Prespices, prespices, prespices. That close enough. We're they not even are on the tonight. cusp of <laughs> a trip to Arlington. And here's your favorite. Oh, Huntington. Huntington. What did Josh Cal Culvert get? Too many speeding tickets going to work. He made too and many. Finally, he, he couldn't. He couldn't, he, afford to, he couldn't afford to work there anymore. He's got an active warrant, so he just left. <laughs> and he now left. he's going to Dilly. He left. <laughs> He left like the Colts did uh, Baltimore back at, like with Mayfair trucks. <laughs> He's just sneaking out. Uh, Jefferson, I was really surprised by this. Antoine Jefferson, mm -hmm. former state championship running back and defensive back for Jefferson. He stepped down. But, man, I think they got a really great one in Ty Taylor, man. Boy, do they. And, do I, and they. Jefferson, I mean, Jefferson did a really good job, 64 and 36. But yeah. it always felt like. Jefferson was two rounds too early every year in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I don't ne necessarily think that ha that happens now. I, I think you're getting a completely different Jefferson Bulldog. Uh, Kirby Will, we talked a little bit about Seth Hubbard, the offensive coordinator for Dangerfield. And I don't think he got enough credit. We just look at Dangerfield a lot of times and go, oh, they're talented. But you and I have even said this. The last four years of Dangerfield, it's been a discipline on the field that you, we haven't seen a lot of times. Mm -hmm. and, and he is definitely a part. Their offense didn't just look like, hey, run down the field, throw a jump ball. They, right, they had right. structure and schematic things they did. And they, I watched that center game, and I know they didn't score a ton on a center team, but remember, that was when their quarterback was hurt. That's right. They adjusted to that offensively. And, and yep. that's, you know, we'll see how they respond. I, I think this is a good hire for Kirbyville. Yeah, I do too. And you got to remember, Dangerfield was, man, I still think they were only a, a play or two away. I totally agree. Just making the plays that they normally do from being in the state championship game. I, I totally agree with you there. And I, I don't think they're going to be that far off again this year. Jim Ned, again, this is one that just slipped under mine. Matt Fanning, after six seasons, a 58 17 record, of course, state champions in 3A Division One back in 2020, also region finalists the next year. Uh, he steps down to take a role at Harden Simmons. To Defensive coordinator Jonathan McClure is now the head coach. That's not a bad move. No. Th that we just talked about. It. That's a program you hire within. You don't need to change a lot. Nope. You, that you have your you have what you do. You have your identity. You're tough as nails. Maybe don't get hurt as so much. But I I go back to they have had just horrible luck in the injury department the last few years. Well, I go back to watching something about the San Francisco 49ers, which most people consider one of the most physical teams in football right now. Yep. And one of the things that – I can't remember who it was on NFL talking about, like one of the negatives is you tend to hurt yourself. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, being physical, it's a mindset and all, but when – and you and I have talked about it, when you're throwing your body on the football field, it's a 50-50. You get hurt or they get hurt. Yep. And so I think sometimes – the physicality almost hurts them in, in a weird way. Um, East, Eddie Gill, Eddie yes. Gill retiring. Yeah, right? that kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, well, uh, what too. a what a coach, man. He Eddie did. Gill was the man. Well, and he won't get enough credit because his you know his overall record is one sixty one and eighty two, but he was great at Cisco. And then places like Poteet and Whitesboro and Callisburg, people don't realize where he was pulling those programs from. Oh yeah, I mean, we're, he was literally the guy you hire if you want to take an zero and ten team and get them into six and four, seven and three in a couple of years. Oh yeah, when he first started at Whitesboro, they were they were a doormat. Dude. We used to make and fun of them. He, within a few years, he turned them into just a physical athletic team yep. i mean I, they used to be one of our jokes on our shows back then and then we i didn't realize his record was only 161 and 182 again wow. a lot of that's those the many years of trying to yeah. dig those out uh, east bernard 
Yeah. Uh, you know, Wade Bossy retired after eight seasons, 77 and 23, state semifinals in 2018 and 2019. That 2019 team, them, them, and, you know, Paul Pewitt, you play that game a thousand times. I think it, one team wins maybe one more time. It might even be even. One of the best, just pure physical games we saw. Yeah. And then they named Harmony head coach Jeremy Jenkins. I was a little shocked by that. Not to hire. I mean, it's a great hire. I'm saying I was a little shocked that they were able to get him away from Harmony. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Speaking of Harmony, they're going to go with Brian Mock, who was uh, a, a defensive coordinator. It sure does seem like a lot of defensive coordinators are, are getting the head coaching jobs this year. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Any of these standing out to you? Uh, da, 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 da. How about Totaler? Totaler. Totaler. Oh, yeah. Jeremy, Jeremy Mullins, Mullins left. Uh, he, he is now up at Eagle Mountain. I meant to bring that up when we were talking. They're in that district with Brock and Graham. So if, if – if there's a third team that can be interesting, you know, but Toller's going to probably need some time there. But what he did at uh, what he did at Toller is just absolutely amazing. He had a special program or a special group, and he, I mean, he took them. I think as far as you could take that team, uh, and, and they're going to hire uh, Blake Mouser, who was the Austin Vandergriff offensive coordinator. Ooh, Vandergriff put up some points over the last couple of years. Oh yeah. That's they? that program is, you know, they played DeSoto a couple years ago in the state championship. How about Houston guy yeah. leaving, uh, uh, leaving wall, right? I guess, uh, retiring, uh, but hiring Craig slaughter, Craig slaughter has some skins on the wall. Well, and Brett Lee pointed this out last year, uh, when he was like, uh, you know, because I think Slaughter came in two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, I'm sorry, it's 2017. But he kept saying, like, man, if guy ever leaves, Slaughter's going to be the guy. And he nailed it. And I we remember Slaughter at Sweetwater and Lano, but especially at Sweetwater. I, I think this is, I, I think this was a necessary hire. And this is nothing against Houston guy, but it felt like Wall had kind of had a wall around them. Like they couldn't, mm -hmm. you know, it's just one of those things, uh, kind of like Holiday with Frank Johnson. It just felt like they couldn't push any further. Yeah. And maybe a new, Look, a new something. And it's not like Slaughter's going to do a lot different. I guarantee you they're going to run the ball and they're going to play sound defense. You, you recognize that name, by the way? Keelan Kincaid? That's the former SMU uh, player, oh, really? if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. I mean, I did I, not know that. I think that's him. Uh, anyway, he resigned after 10 years. I didn't even realize he'd been there that long. Uh, with Winona, they're still open. Again, we talked about it with Bangs. Oh, yeah, it was Port Gregory Portland's defensive coach, uh, Colton Buzzard. He's now going to be the Dragons head coach. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Groveton makes a change. Hawk None of these are real shocking. Holland, Holland, uh, you know, after Brad Talbot retire retires, uh, 104 39, uh, their best season. It feels weird to say that their best season was only the region finals because it feels like Holland is, but they're always right at that region final yeah they're just they're they just played the tough region they get man. landlocked yeah uh one of your favorites ted Patton. he yeah. retired from kearns I, man you want to talk about again not quite like eddie gill but not far off Patton, i think gets underrated for his work especially back when he was at elysian fields mm -hmm. um he, he did a lot of great things there he did what he could at brusque brusque is just i mean we've seen it the past few years when they've had some really good Pro or players, Rusk is just one of those that's just really hard to consistently win at. Right. Um, Marlon with the, you know, Ruben Torres, he resigns. Look, that man, for what they're having to deal with there and, and some of the things that he had to deal with, and, and I, I'm just really impressed that he at least has brought Marlon back into being a, a team that is at least a region threat. And I think his defensive coordinator, who's now going to be the head coach, I think that's a great move. Yeah. How about uh, Pewitt, Cedric Dorsey gone, uh, and Jeremy Russell from Newton, the offensive coordinator, is in. Hey, Paul Pewitt, what are y'all going to do? Oh, what we've always done. We're just going <laughs> to throw a little South Texas flair into that's it. That's right. Man. I love that. I think that's a great hire. It's what we talked about with, with Jim Ned. Uh, certain programs, and I'm not saying you can never change, but certain programs, they live off that identity. Yeah. And every time Paul Pewitt has went away from it, and not that Dorsey went away from it, but like a few years ago when they tried to spread it out, it just doesn't feel right. Right. I don't think you're going to get spread out offense with Russell. It, it, you're going to come in and they're going to play power football. And as we talked about, them dropping in the 2A Division One, I, I think is going to make them – almost instantly competitive. Yeah. And then the big news was uh, Jason Herring from uh, Referio retiring. Uh, DC, is that right? Uh, wasn't Drew Cox? Yeah, Drew uh, Cox, the, the defensive coordinator. Yeah, he, he was hired. 
uh, to replace uh, Jason Herring. So that was the big news, right? I I mean, it feels like, again, with the, and I know every year realignment, it's big news, but it feels like it's been bigger and bigger this year. I will say this. I love how Jason Herring went from 10 years ago being the bad guy of football because he was running the score up and he kept trying to explain to people why, like, yeah. hey, we keep getting beat in the playoffs because – I sit, guys, to now he's one of the elder statesmen that's very <laughs> – and, and he should be. He's a really super nice guy. Oh, yeah. I honestly – I'll admit I kind of had an idea of who he was from all that until I finally got to meet him at a coaching school, and he's completely different. You know, he's just – he's a lot like uh, – I met him at a Sonora game when oh, he wow. was the head coach at Sonora. God, that's been many years. How about say eight, 25 years ago? Something. Well, if it was 17 seasons at Rafirio, so it was at least – at least 18, 18 years, ago. <laughs> years ago, probably a year or two before that. So. He reminds me a lot of Surratt, where you think he's going to be a lot more big about himself, and he's really not. Mm -hmm. And I always appreciate that because we deal with a lot of we deal with a lot of two and eight coaches who feel like they're Lombardi sometimes. And so it's nice when you get the opposite, when a really good coach is just kind of quiet. Of course, Timpson, uh, Kerry Therwanger gets the state championship, and he'd already announced that he was going to retire anyway. Mm -hmm. 183 wins, 75 total. Of course, he led Love Lady to the state semifinals a few times. I love that he won because he was one of those coaches. You know, we all talk about samples at Duncanville, but he was one of those that had just never could quite break through that state championship door, and he finally did. Um, uh, Patrick Gandy, who was the uh, was the defensive coordinator, I don't know enough about him, but hey, Timpson's not going anywhere. No, I mean they're, gonna they're still going to be really, really good. Yeah, they're going to miss Terry, but it's not like they're going to drop to four and six or anything. Right, uh, Wascom. Uh, Greg Pearson left. Uh, you know, he had come out. Wasn't, now, he was, I think, like the defensive coordinator when they were winning state, was a head coach for one year, then retired. And, and then did came, not get me to lie. No, that. I think I think that's how it was. But anyway, Joaquin head coach Wade Lawson is now their, their new head coach. I think that's a good hire. Joaquin has been really competitive over the last few years. Yeah. Um, I'm not really seeing any more that stands out. Oh, Rex Sharp to Iola. Rex Sharp, who used mm -hmm. to be – uh, who retired. He'd been at uh, Sabine, and then he was at Iola. He retired. Uh, they never quite did what I think a lot of people thought that they would do with him. And then Terry Ward. Yeah. Uh, I don't – it says is out after. That tells me <laughs> in typical Ward fashion, something probably didn't go good there at the end. But yeah, I, he, Terry's he, a good guy. Man. Oh, yeah, Terry's he is. A good guy. But you uh, know, uh, Ten Hall's mm. hard to win in because there's – Pat is in Las Vegas. Like – uh, coaching at one of the private schools in Las Vegas. Isn't it, um, isn't it the one that used to come down and play Gilmer? No. Oh, it's not? No. I thought it was. I okay. can't remember which one it is now. Yeah, I don't know why I thought. But, but, uh, but Ten Hall. should have stopped by a few weeks ago. Oh, that's right, because you were in Vegas. Um, I was in Vegas. Best Tenna I can remember. Wait, you, best you can remember that you were in Vegas? God. You might not have actually been in Vegas? No, I was in Vegas, but that's, I can remember landing. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember spending a week, and I remember remember getting back on the flight. So you Afterwards, had a great time then. I think I did. That's kind of how it goes when when I go over to your place for the redneck <laughs> party that's coming uh, up in April. Yeah, that's just because I here drink this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you never drink green tea. No, trust me. <laughs> Why is it burning is through the cup? Eye dropper. <laughs> <laughs> eye dropper. But I was gonna say, Tenahaw is one of those weird places that wins a lot, but it's really hard to win there. Not on the field politics and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Remember a couple of years ago after they'd won state, that coach was gone. And then like the principal was the head coach. And then he basically gave up head coaching control, but was calling the, all it's, it gets really weird. I wonder how many of those Timpson teams lost some players to, uh, I'm sorry, Tenahaw teams. They were so good. Finally started losing some, uh, some athletes to Timpson. Wonder if that happens. That's much. a good point. I mean, we we just we literally talked about it with when you when you look at areas like uh you know Texarkana with Texas High, Liberty Island, Pleasant Grove, uh -huh. Marshall, Wascom, Elysian Fields, Timpson, Tenahaw. I don't think Bobo and Blair are doing a lot there. No, I, you say that, but if I'm not mistaken, somebody somebody told me on Smokey that one of the one of the offensive tackles or defensive tackles, which is probably the same guy from Timpson was had was born in Blair, and I just love that because oh, really? we all know the song, the famous yeah. Timpson. Ten Hall Timpson, Bobo Blair. Anyway, I think that's it for this week. All right. Again, we are until just, June and, at least. And, well, for you, I will be back tomorrow. Uh, Brett of NETSN. We're going to be talking realignment. I worked out a better deal. Yes, you, you don't did. do anything all year. We'll still pay you. Just, you. you just roll in, Terry. You get 
paid the same, but you've got to work. <laughs> you just roll in like when you want. Like my agent said, I needed to talk about these three schools. Let's go. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be talking with Brett of NETSN. I'm going to be talking with Matt Diggs about the pilot point because, you know, he does that pilot point show. Mm -hmm. Um Chad Worrell will be joining me this week. By the way, yes, we will have a Pilot Point Coaches show. All right. Um, we're going to be having all that. So you might be out of – and you might come back in online a couple times if, if, I, if yeah. I want you to do stuff. But, yeah, it's basically you're out till June. We just wanted to remind everybody that, hey, we do this show. We do appreciate everybody for joining us. Find us on Twitter at Grant and Terry. Oh, you know why this is my favorite show of the year? Because uh, Coach X doesn't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, we miss Coach X. But anyway, until next time, he's Greg Goodwin. I'm Terry Bennett. And this has been the Power Plus Mouth Guard Sideline to Sideline.